Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Hi. Well, obviously, I'm not Bruce Broussard. I'm Renee Daphne, and I'm here with Fred Stewart today. We're going to have a bit of a show without Bruce. He's on a little bit of a holiday. And we're going to be discussing some things that um, Stewart, <laughs> Stewart, Fred and I mm -hmm. have thought would be uh, both interesting and informative to the audience. So we'll start off with Fred, and I know you wanted to uh, discuss the nurse. One of the things was the nurse that ha was arrested in Utah. Yeah, I, I want to discuss the nurse in the in the context of of one of the re things that I think um, it goes on between law enforcement sometimes in the community um, is a lot of our law enforcement people um, don't really get to understand how the, the public sees them, um, you know, truthfully. And I think this Utah situation is a perfect one. Uh, the, I, when I looked at that video, I looked at a woman who's trying to cooperate with a, with a police officer. Right. She knows that what he's asking for is not proper legally because right. she knows her patient isn't a criminal or isn't a, he's not under arrest. But she goes to her policy book, her company policy book, her hospital, and looks it up and see if there's any way she can work with this police officer. And, you know, I, could, I, I think that's how people, people should. We should try to cooperate right. with our law enforcement people. I don't want people just poo-pooing a right. responsibility to be a good citizen and cooperate with law enforcement. But when she showed him what her problem was, that she had a legal and policy problem to comply with his, um, his request, you know, instead of becoming a bully, this guy should have looked at that and said, you know, okay, I need to talk to her boss or two, I need to bring in my boss. Right. You understand? This has right. now gone beyond okay. the two of us. You had a head nurse right. and you had a sergeant or whatever, the head, the head uh, right. officer in investigation. And you've got, a, you've got an impassable problem. And here's the problem that I see that the real problem is, the unseen problem. He all of a sudden decided that I'm going to make you take this sample. Now, I find two really seriously big problems with this. One, exactly how is she going to take a sample with her arm pushed behind her back by you? Well, he, Number one, yeah. okay, like you, you can't get a sample that way. Well, at that time, he'd already arrested force. her. He decided he, she wasn't going to okay, do that. Okay, but the but point is that no car. matter what you do, when you get physical with somebody, they're not going to be able to comply with you, right? So right. where is the, the, the ability of the average citizen to say, at that point, you are out of control, you have stepped outside your authority, what do we have as recourse when you turn into the Gestapo? Well, that's where, you know, you, you follow the procedures that most police departments have in process and you file a complaint. But you can't do anything <laughs> at that moment. When my uh, arm's uh, broken, I'm not interested well, in the complaint, Well, unfortunately, because a lot of times in these situations, I mean, this situation could have been something different to where the guy was a criminal. But it wasn't. I know. but And that's something for you to follow afterwards. And that's where the, <laughs> the that's why I've said on my Facebook, the police officer's union the mayor or city manager that they should fire this guy but they didn't and, well no they haven't done it yet right. but they should fire this guy they should have done it for the sake of the people right. because this police officer well, had exp well, showed but where's extremely the recompense? poor judgment where's the recompense even if they fire him uh -huh. where's the recompense for the injured party that's what i'd like to know well there's nothing here in the system that says hey how are we going to compensate this woman for being literally physically manipulated because she stood by what was right. I mean, if she feels that she needs to be financially compensated, I have no, no her I'm not, right. I'm not talking it's about her, her right. being financially compensated. Okay. I'm saying, how do we incentivize anybody else to stand up and stand for the truth if we are not going to stand behind her when it's time for her to stand up and say the truth? If she's going to get a thank you, ma'am, and we don't really care about you after she went to the line for that, and it could have come off a lot worse than it did, she could have been injured. So if it did, if, you know, where's the recompense? How do we... How do we make them accountable for the fact they did something wrong? I, I, don't, I don't think we disagree too far on this, but where I look at it, she's the head nurse, okay? Her responsibility is to do what she exactly did. She did her job. Mm -hmm. She was mistreated. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure as a leader, she pref would prefer 
that she faced that than anybody who works under her. But I don't want her facing that I don't because want it her says either. to me, I have a Gestapo system in order. I don't have a legal system. I don't want her facing that either. I don't think anybody should, but she's the leader. She's on point right. that night. Right. Well, when I'm you're saying on point, I want things like that happen. Right. No, I'm saying I want I want a recompense situation. I want accountability to the point where there's responsibility if that happens. If you go out of control, mm -hmm. then there's more that happens to you than you lose your job because you have violated another person's, what I call, property line. Well, that, okay? you know, it's not that I would disagree with that, but my point is I don't think there's much more you can do not to, now. To I'm now, saying to, we need to think about it. Well, no, I agree. Maybe you know, something else. We need I mean, to start talking I, about this I guy. don't know if something like this... I mean, and maybe people do feel this way, that a, a cop that, that screws up like this should be arrested and thrown in jail. I don't think that is necessary needed. Ooh, I think no, I'm not more, talking about jail. What, what, I'm talking about compensation for his action. Now, he either well, does that, a boatload of civil work or he compensates that woman by working for her. I'm saying, no, you compensate well, not in money and going to jail. I'm saying you compensate in your time and energy, which you took from her when you laid hands on her. Well, I mean, like I said, uh, that's something for civil court. And if she feels that she needs to be compensated, I wouldn't force compensation on her if she didn't want it. But she feels for uh, that she deserves it. I think it's her, her every right to sue the city sue this individual for being, you know, mistreated, but, you know, um, she may not feel like she needs to be compensated. But, Bottom but line... But it's not compensation. I'm talking about making the situation whole. This is much different than compensation. This is... This is showing that this kind of action, A, is not acceptable, B, there are consequences, and C, we don't want it happening you, again. You know, I think where the difference is between you and me on this one is, you see, as a black person, we learn because of racism, that we're always not going to be made whole, that we're going to suffer things, and things are going to happen that aren't nice, that are unfair to us, that even when they're resolved, we're not going to be resolved and made 100%. Life just doesn't work that way. We are always able to be made well, let's 100%. Put this way. My more concern is that this behavior by this officer and any other officer in the police department there would never happen again. That would be my, my, my primary concern, is that it would never happen again. That's one of the reasons why I feel that then he should be fired already. Well, Every let's make it a, a real big incentive so it doesn't happen again. If it's going to be an incentive to take away guns from people so that they don't go out and murder, then let's think about taking away the privileges of somebody who says they're in the position of authority and having control over other people. Mm -hmm. Let's take away some of their privileges well, I, and let's see how it works. Maybe the next cop will think twice about doing it. Well, I think so, too. But I think that's why I, I, this guy losing his job may be good enough. I mean, I, I know a lot of cops. I'm related to a lot of, to some cops. I've got friends um, whose kids are cops. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm an old man now. I've got friends whose kids run around with guns and badges. And every cop that I know, every good cop I know, being a cop was very important to them. It was something that they worked hard for. It was something that they work hard for every day to, one, not just do a good job, but also to make sure they keep their job. Because a cop can, uh, can make a mistake and lose all of their hard work and all of their years of investment. So I think, I think people don't quite understand what a big deal it is for a cop to lose their job, lose their badge, lose their gun. I mean, get fired for poor judgment. There might be another law enforcement agency that will give this guy a second chance. Maybe, maybe not. But I tell you what, if he gets a second chance in another law enforcement agency uh, that knows about his poor judgment in this case, he's probably going to be, uh, uh, hopefully, learn from this mistake. Or maybe no other police department well, will hire him. I know if why? I was mayor of Portland, but there is no way in the world I would, I would be offended if he put in an application to work here. Are you kidding me? That guy's judgment is so bad. I don't want him in a position well, then, of, of backing then, up but another again, police Fred, officer. How is that any different than any other industry? I mean, in well, any a, other industry, uh, if you screw up to mm -hmm, that extent, mm -hmm. you're screwed in that industry from then on out, whether it's a financial industry. And he very well may be. You know, okay, and I don't care. You mm -hmm. know why? Because if you're going to be that much of a screw up and you're going to be that bad at your job, I want you out.
out so at least two other people We're can in be agreement. in who are going to be great. We're in agreement. Okay. And what I want is more accountability for culling out the problem people. Well, I, I'd be open to ideas about that, but honestly, I don't know how far you can go. I mean... You can go as far as principled people are willing to go. And the thing is that if you have values, yeah, everybody's got values, and values change. But your principles shouldn't. Do you lie? Do you cheat? Do you steal? Those are the only three I'm interested you, in. you got to remember, part of the problem with him me having poor judgment is that he has not been properly supervised by his supervisors um, in the law enforcement agency. A guy that acts like this, this isn't a one-off thing. He's done it before. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, one thing I've blown away with all the police officers I know, especially the ones I know very, very well, it freaks me out. Um, their ability to quick thinking, good judgment quick thinking. It just, I, I've not seen anything like that since I used to hang out around um, fighter pilots. Same thing. Very quick, solid uh, judgment calls. It's something that they, it's one of the reasons why they get divorced a lot, because it's not something you can just turn off when you take your, your clothes off. You know what I'm talking about? You, it's, a way yeah. of, it's a way of life. It's a way of thinking. Right. And but, that's what I'm saying. When I see a guy like this, and he is so far, so far over the top, I mean, there may be some issues there. Maybe this guy's got PSD, PTSD. Well, who cares? He shouldn't be a cop. Well, no, th that's where it comes in with supervisory. All right, what well, it isn't is, just supervisory, is it? Well, what his about supervisor his peers? should know what's going on with yeah, him. Yeah, but what about his peers? You know, to Fair me, enough. To me, it boils down Fair not enough. to the hierarchy, but to the everyday people. If you're not passing judgment on every person that you're around continuously, not judgment of good, bad, mm -hmm. but if you aren't kind of having a discerning nature about everyone around you, you're going to get the hot lead enema every single time. So I want discerning people. Yeah, but, and, and it's like I disagree with you. It's just that I look at it and I go, God, that gets pretty exhausting. Um, you know, when you're looking around and trying to judge at every single moment, you, the people who work with you, I mean, I ain't saying that they're not responsible if they notice something. No, I'm not saying But judge ultimately, the responsibility to make sure that doesn't happen is that cop's Right, but supervisor. again, if this guy, this is not a one-off, obviously. Correct. There's indications. The people he worked with knows it. And you know, as well as I do, mm -hmm. in any organizational structure, everybody protects everybody else because then they'll protect my ass too. That's the way it goes. And until that nature change, until principles, yeah. the underlying principles that you live by become more important than the group you belong to, mm -hmm. this is going to continue. No, I agree, but that's why I'm looking at holding him accountable, and I'd be looking at holding his supervisors accountable for, you know, allowing this to happen. Now, maybe there's there have been indications and stuff, but you know, when I was in the Marines, I could not, I did not get to choose who I was in the Marines with. You know what I mean? Whoever my sergeant and my my chain of command felt needed to be with me, right? That's who I was with. That's how it is in most jobs. Right. Well, it's, it's the same jobs. in everywhere, all over exactly. the planet, most, in everything you most do. Most jobs are that way. Jobs, so volunteerism, maybe, everything. I mean, we don't know. Maybe there have been some complaints against them. I mean, from, from uh, well, I don't know about that. I and mean, we really okay. can't get into that. What we can get into is the video and how he treated a good citizen right. who okay. was trying to but cooperate. Let, let's try and move on to, mm -hmm. okay, how do we... If we're going to, okay, I don't want to spend too much mm -hmm. time on this because we, we spent uh, okay. 15 minutes, but if if this situation happened here, oh yeah, okay, my question in the whole thing is why aren't people in that town outraged? And if they are, how come we're not hearing about how the people in the situation feel about what's going on? Well, uh, there's a couple of good reasons about that. Uh, people don't know how to react to a bad cop. The Portland police, believe it or not, they, they still do a very poor job pr promoting and educating the public on how to deal with a cop you feel has wronged you or is not acting professionally. Um, Why should anyone have to learn that? That is insane to think well, that somebody the, should have to learn that. They have to learn the process to address... No, we have to change the process to where we don't have cops on the beat like that that you have to learn how to judge with. I, would, uh -uh. I can't That's disagree wrong with that. Problem. I can't disagree with that. Okay. But I'm talking about right now, we well, don't have that. Okay, well then let's start focusing on fixing the real problem and not what I need to learn to protect myself from the cops. That's insanity. Not really. 
Not really. Well, I think it's insane that that is the concept that people have to run I mean, around. If you're at a restaurant and you've got a bad waiter or a bad bartender and you want to make a complaint, most of us understand where to go. We go to the manager. We go to the owner. Okay? In our situation with the police, we don't understand where to go. We, in general, the public doesn't understand. You go to their sergeant. You know what I mean? It doesn't who matter. Has, you call has no. A, you call the office and ask. I had a problem with an officer. It's no. I'm sorry. That's giving them just making people stupid. And I don't believe people are stupid. When you're pissed off at an organization, you'll find somebody to complain to. So okay. it's not because they don't know how. Do it's because they're not willing to do it. Do you want to complain to the right person, or do you want to complain to the wrong person? If you're sincere about what you want to do, then you are focused enough to know where you're going. And this is part of the problem of not expecting people to know things and I'm tired of people acting like the average person out there is a moron and I'm sorry I don't believe that I think that they're intelligent they're aware they are conscientious and what's been happening is there's a concerted effort to shut down their ability to really perceive what's going on there is a real hardcore effort to make sure people are not intuitive that they are not paying attention to the gut head down here and they're really forcing people to be more and more focused on information rather than how do I feel about this person? Because to me, that is some of the information you get off a situation that tells you who that person is and what they're likely to do. Well, we can't base law enforcement on how people feel. Because feelings are wrong sometimes. Well, no, no. Go, hold on. I'm not talking about feeling. Okay. I'm talking about the ability that allows a Tai Chi master to know there are three people behind them and I'm going to kill all three of them. Do you understand? This is not woo-woo. This is training yourself to be consciously aware of energies in the room around you. Because everything in the world is made of energy, Correct. Yeah, probably. All right. If everything's made of energy, then everything is emanating an energy. You got to remember, I, I went to a Portland public school. Well, they, I went to... They didn't teach us black guys very well. Well, let's put it this way. <laughs> Most of what I learned was because I dug it out of the ground with my bare fingernails. So please don't yeah. tell me how hard it was. Because I'm one of those people who do not remember facts, okay? So I had to claw everything I got out of the ground with both fingernails hands full of fingernails so the thing is that you have to start understanding that if everything's energy right yeah that person is putting off energy and if that person is really a negative person with a lot of really grippy stuff coming off them uh -huh. you're you need to train yourself to be aware of that because you can feel that kind of energy from like 30 feet away and you're not going to get close enough for them to stab you do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I hear, I understand you, okay. but I also well, that's say the again, training we I be, want everyone we to gotta have. We got to be careful. Feelings can be wrong. I'm sometimes. not talking about feelings. I'm talking about awareness. Or Different aware. than feelings. Awareness is feelings can be wrong is too. Feelings is how I feel. No, I'm talking about. I am sensing a cold air on my arm because that door over there just opened. Do you understand? This is training your sens sensitivity to be aware of things around you and to be aware of what kind of things and cues are coming off someone. Well, the city of Portland, educating people on how to c c file complaints um, about, with bad cops, with a lot of these complaints being uh, more accessible to, to the public, um, not... You know, when I say uh, accessible as far as people can read everything, I mean, they're public information. People should be able to request documents and read whatever they want. But there needs to be a general understanding about the cops that we that we hire, whether or not these are people of, of, of good character and good judgment. And if, they, if a mistake has been made, a citizen should have the right to complain about it and that, re that, that complaint being taken very seriously and the Portland police doing what they right. can to resolve it. They, but the thing is, you got to educate people on well, that you, because, you know... That's here's not, the thing. You that, can educate them like all you want, Fred. Mm -hmm. However, it's just like Kaiser, okay? Mm -hmm. I had to go into Kaiser every week and have a blood test. Mm -hmm. And the woman who was taking my blood test, mm -hmm. my hand was out like this, right? And she insisted on putting my hand next to her breast every single time, 
Okay. No, okay, I can understand. Every that. single I like it when that happens. time. Well, I was not really completely impressed about this at all. So I complained to Kaiser. You did? Mm hmm. Guess what happened? What? Nothing. Nothing. So what I'm saying to you is, yeah, you can have a wonderful process of complaints. And this is, look, nobody has more vested than getting that tart out of that position than Kaiser. Because I could escalate this and make it a really nasty thing, which I didn't do. But the thing is that it's not going to happen any different because they're cops. So for me, again, the most important thing is people of principle become cops instead of people who don't have any principles becoming I cops. I feel most people that become cops are very principled. Well, maybe when they start. And then I don't know what happens to some of them, but they turn whatever. Well, that's a good thing to talk about, and that's something I think people don't, don't talk about enough, especially because our media doesn't really feel it's important. Um, we do have a lot of PTSD, a lot of, uh, I think we got a lot of emotional issues with inside, inside our rank and file of the police. Look at what they face. Look at who they face. And a lot of these uh, law, uh, law enforcement officers face more intense combat during their career than a highly decorated U.S. Marine. You know, that's my reason why I have a lot of respect for these guys and women. I mean, yeah. God, um, some of my friends that are retired cops, I sit down sometimes over beers and I listen to them talk and listen to the situations that, that, that have come up and how they dealt with it. And I, you know, in my head, I like to think that I'm a pretty bad, bad dude, pretty tough. But I got to tell you, you know, you listen to what these guys and women who really have faced bad stuff and you figure out pretty soon that you're probably, at least in my case, not as bad as you think you are. No. Because no. I know if I'd been in that situation, I probably would have had either a poor judgment and right. done the wrong thing, or I would have just kind of hid someplace. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, let's talk about, one thing I'd like to talk about is, is the solutions about what, some of the things you're doing, mm -hmm. and some of the things that we can come up with for everyday people okay. to do. Because one of the things that I've noticed, especially with the millennials, mm -hmm. is they're no longer interested in the what. They want to know the how with everything. It's like, yeah, I know what the end goal is. Tell me how to get there. Tell me what's my step first step. What's my first thing? So what I'd like to do is find things that people can do in their own place where they have some kind of influence mm -hmm. that can make them feel empowered so that they can keep fighting, that, but not so much fighting because I, not, you know, you can't really fight it, but just keep aiming toward what they value and what they want to have in the future. So, what what kind of things do you do? I know you're in realty. Mm -hmm. What do you do on a daily basis with people that makes you feel like you're helping them to see their way through? It's two this things mess? that I do as often as I can. I talk about real estate. And I talk about Oregon and well, most particularly Portland history as much as I can. Um, I try my best to help people understand where they fit in things. You know, I, 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 I was with my high school mate's company last Friday, Kilong Ung. He's a state farm insurance broker. And um, he was out of the office that day and I had to meet with one of his, his good people. And she happens to be a lesbian. And she, and when I say she's a lesbian, you can tell from 100 miles away. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was telling her, I said, do you know, 29 years ago this month, I got into real estate here in Portland, Oregon. And I'm not going to say that there weren't any homosexual um, insurance brokers. But if there were, and I'm sure there were, they hid it. Mm -hmm. You understand? They didn't have photos of their... Their 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 partner. lover, their partner, <laughs> and their you know around. Yeah. They didn't go out and and advertise. No. You know, hey, you know, when I say advertise, she's not advertising. She's just being her. Yeah. I said they didn't do what you're doing. I said this shows us. I mean, because she's not far from my age. She's younger than me. She's probably like 45. I'm 52. I said this shows you how far one how great our community is and just how far we've come. You know. I said, just like when I first started selling, you know, real estate, there was realtors who wouldn't even deal with homosexuals. If they picked up you were gay, they, you know, they just didn't want your business. It was hilarious. And I was just telling her, I said, you know how, how, how things have changed? And I said, this is why when, you know, when you come to work and you're doing your job, and when I come to work and I do my job, it's so important that we honor 
everybody who came before us that made our lives possible, that we got to be the absolute best that we have ever been. Because right. this stuff didn't come easy. There was a time when nobody wanted a black real estate broker. You understand it all. They didn't think we should be it. You know, in this city. Well, and there they, were the times when people said, if you're time, gay, Fred, you're, I, you're I defective. Can't, I can't go back to this. I, I well, no, but this, going it, back to this. I know. I don't, like, I don't like going there Here's the either. deal. There's always been a time, and I can show you Bastier's book, The Law, which is just it's my favorite book in the entire world because it talks about hmm. how what the law is and how the law operates. Well, in the book, in page nine is mm -hmm. where you lose most women because it talks about are we to let... Uh, Women and, and incompetent people. It talks about incapable people, mm -hmm. not incompetent, but incapable people. And it talks about children, insane people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people who have done certain crimes and women. It kind of lumps them all together. And, every, and most women go, what, on page mm -hmm. nine. How, how long ago was that book? Well, that was 1850. But mm -hmm. what they don't understand is incapable does not mean incompetent. It means without power. And that's 1850. And in 1850, women had no power. Okay. Oh, yeah, I agree. So neither did children, neither did people who were incarcerated. Neither did black folks. Well, it, no, they did actually. Don't go there right well, now with did. the race thing. Okay. Yeah. A lot of them did have power. So at the time, well, women, Douglas. women did not have quote we power. Didn't, we didn't have so that much power. It's concept. The concept, what I'm trying to get across is the mm -hmm. concept of empowerment rather than people thinking in labels you know you're this kind of a label or that kind of a label or a combination well, of this label and that label and a combination of this label that label and this label instead of thinking in labels think of people's capabilities well, and think, also their the competences thing, the thing is i think you and i are in the same place in that i think that's where we're, we're her and i are evidence that we're marching in that direction We've well, no, I'd say there's there been some backlash time, in the other direction, there was, too. There was a time when guys like me and, guys, and women like her were not allowed. No matter how much we desired or had a passion or an aptitude or whatever to do this certain right, thing, well we just weren't right, allowed. Okay, and there's times now where and, people... And in our lifetime, people, hold it, in our lifetime, like literally since we were born, her and I have shared watching this change. You understand? And we've got to pass it on so that the people that come behind us don't take it for granted. So people right. don't feel that these freedoms just occurred because they should be there. There's a lot of things that should be that aren't. Right. But you know for every, I mean? every, 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 look, there's ebb and flow of all of it. Okay. So for every quote, liberty that you gained, some other people around the world lost them. Okay. So, and there's more people losing liberty too. So for me, it's not a matter of of, well, I don't of look at it that way. Saying that you know, look how far we have come. It's I, look at what we're doing. I, I do not look at it that way. I do not look at me having my access to the liberties that everybody in my country is allowed to have, and every human being is afforded, takes away from anybody else. No, I didn't say that. Yes, well, I'm saying that, that you have to notice that that there are ebbs and flows of liberties, okay? And that some, some that we have liberty. All right, a lot of people don't have liberty in Selwood right now. You know what the liberty they don't have in Selwood? If you're a conservative in Selwood and you put out a lawn sign, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to get trash on your lawn, okay? So there are some freedoms that have advanced and some freedoms that have been taken away. Well, that's, on August, that's eight, wrong. On that's August, wrong. Okay, on August 6th, Free speech died in Portland. I'm sorry. Down on the waterfront, free speech died in Portland on August 6th. Because I was down there at the demonstration with all the white supremacists, right? Mm -hmm. Do I look like a white supremacist? No. I'm a Ron Paul supporter. Funny that. Yeah, there were a couple of Trump flags. And so what? But who was there? People who were interested in, in demonstrating for free speech. And what did we have coming down the pike from a quarter mile away? All dressed in black with black masks and beating bucket drums and shooting air horns into our face and bringing their brass band. The Antifa who were fighting these fascist white people. Oh great, only free speech died right there because there was only one cop. They had one cop in the whole place. Nobody separated them. They followed us the whole march. They followed us the whole way. They air horned in our face and then we got pepper sprayed. So 
you, you know, the, the, we may have gained in certain areas, but believe me, we are backpedaling in a lot of others. And free speech is definitely one of them. So, you know, don't mm -hmm. look at it as making tremendous advances. Make sure that you see the unseen part that Bastier was talking about. There's the seen part, and then there's the unseen part. Because the promo that was put out about that march, there were 61 pictures that were put out by Oregon Live. Mm -hmm. How unbiased can the reporting be if I'm in three of the 61 pictures? Well, you got to remember, that's the Oregonian. Okay. And they but are this a racist is the organization. Only thing that, it's not about race. No, this is, is about it's shutting a, it's down a, it's about free people, speech. If you're a racist, you are character flawed. Okay, and well, we're not talking about race. We're talking about free speech. flawed characters okay. running the Oregonian. Okay. And well, the Limit Week and a couple other newspapers. All right. Well, you know, I mean, you, this is how I am, ma'am. Yeah, but you don't for have you. to go to it, race. It, it, you look, have to just go to. No, no, for can me, I have to because I'm a black person and I deal with it all the time. Maybe you don't have to, and you're lucky that you don't have to. Because I don't want. No, I anybody. deal with it all the time. But what I'm trying Fred, to say, you know, what I deal with well, all the time. I deal with people talking about a subject that I find as foreign to my thinking because of the way I was introduced well, to the concept. Well, let me finish this for a second. Let me it, finish you know, this for a second. Yeah, I hear it all the time. A racist individual is a flawed person. Okay. okay. Define hold on, hold on, hold on. a racist individual a for me. A person who intentionally or tolerates biases against people of another race, a, a, another culture. Okay, well, okay. here's a bias. Now, hold it, hold it. I'm not done. And to me, once I have identified that in somebody, their, their, their character is flawed. I literally am prepared to expect anything bad out of them. I really do not trust pretty much anything well, that comes out of them. Well, let me ask you something. And if, I mean, I wouldn't give the, some, some of okay, these people a if you're drop of water to, to set oh, them on fire. Okay. To, to, a, a drop of water to put them out of fire. I mean, Fred. they are just character flawed people. Okay, number one. Is there a possibility that your judgment of them being racist might be wrong? Occasionally it is. Okay. Hold it. Rarely not. But sometimes okay. I have been wrong. You didn't let me finish my thing. Okay. okay? All right. If there's a possibility mm -hmm. that you might have been wrong, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. then that whole consequence that followed from you being wrong is kind of a problem, don't you think? You don't know that's unfortunate. I'm human. Okay. But what I do know is most times, probably 90% plus times, I'm right. Okay. Well, how and about... And those have consequences, too. Okay, but how about we just, instead of talking so much about race and mm -hmm. bringing race up so much, how about we try my path? Okay? okay, what's your path? My path is, it is not a consideration whatsoever when I'm looking at a human being the concept of race, okay? You have to understand, my concept of what the, the thing race means, mm -hmm. okay, is an energy. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's not an intellectual understanding of anything because I was like, I think I was almost 11 years old mm -hmm. before I was aware of this thing of different colored people being a problem. Let's call it that because I didn't freaking understand it when I ran into it, okay? I had never experienced it. I grew up in Navy housing. I'm an army brat. Okay, and it's like Heinz 57 everywhere. Who yeah, cares? That's how it would be. And everybody was calling everybody a WAP, okay? It was like nobody ever used the nigger word in anger at somebody. And when I was 11 years old, mm -hmm. I went to Kansas. I'm in Kansas, mm -hmm. and I'm, little kid comes up to me and showing me an ocarina. You know what an ocarina is? It's like a mm -hmm. little thing. I've never seen an ocarina mm -hmm. before. And so I'm looking at the ocarina, and I'm going, wow, you know, and I'm looking at the ocarina. He's showing me the ocarina, and we're talking like this. And this girl comes over, pushes him aside, and says, don't you talk to him. He's just a nigga. Don't you. And I'm going. Well, I'm see, in shock, well, okay? See, hold it. I was in shock. See, I, okay, but I no way. Let me finish this okay. one, okay? This okay. is important. I had never experienced that kind of energy in my entire life, mm -hmm. okay? Toward mm -hmm. anyone because of how they looked. And I was in complete shock. I mm -hmm. didn't even know how to react because I'd never experienced anything like that in now, my life. Now, imagine being me in 1969... Uh, a five-year-old 
and uh, being treated differently, being the only, well, it was my brother and I, my brother and I were the only black people in a, in a room, basically, right, with all white kids and all uh, white parents, and playing with white kids and having parents come up and grab their kids away from us because they are upset that the person watching it, their kids allowed them to play with black kids. My right, brother but that's not what I'm talking about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know it's not what you're talking about, but it's the reverse. You're talking about how you felt when it first came up to you and how you were confused no, about I'm it. No, I'm saying I, I did that for a I want reason. You to, I, I know. I want you to do, do something for me. Try to put yourself in my shoes for a second as a black person who's only five years old, learning that you are not a good person because your skin's different than the other kids in the room. Okay. Well, yeah. You went through what you went no, through. No, no, you don't and understand. I, and I try how to about, put myself it, in your position. How about if you had people come up to you and stick pins in you at school because you got better grades than they did? Oh, that happened. Okay. That happened to me, too. Well, what I'm saying is there's I, I lots to, of ways I, I to discriminate. To get on. Okay. I used to get picked on. But for, there's lots of ways to discriminate against for people. For being a smart black person. And so for me, <laughs> it's not a matter of worrying about the discrimination. It's, it's a matter of being concerned about what is important in an individual. So it's, for me, it's I look at people, what energy is coming off them? In other words, is the energy coming off them a liar, a cheat, or a thief? And that's what I focus on. It doesn't have anything to do with how, what size you are, what color you are, what shape you are, what genitalia you are. It has absolutely nothing you know, to do that, with that, your And that's thing. great. But the only thing I would like to share with you that I share with a lot of my white friends is there I'm are... not a, white. Well... Wheat. Can pass. White. Can pass for... Wheat. Well... Wheat. <laughs> not, not white. Not this. What I'm trying to say Charcoal. is... Charcoal. There's not there. There are a lot of people who look like you who pass for your side of the culture stream. Why do you mean do they look think, like me? Who do not think like you do? Well, there's lots of people like you that don't think like you do oh, too. I agree. So what? I agree. But, but that's what, what I'm trying to say. But I got to deal with those folks. Yeah, well, I got to deal with the other folks too. Who constantly as often. call me a racist because they don't agree with me. Well, yeah, there's you know, that. If the, if that's the reason why they yeah. call you racist, that's wrong. Well, yeah, but okay. you know, nobody else is going to stand up and say, "Hey, you're an asshole for calling her a racist." Oh, I do. Well, nobody else did it when they did it to me. I just wasn't in the room. Okay. Well, what I'm saying is, when I see that more often, then I'm going to think people are kind of letting go of this race thing. Well, now I think you understand why I talk like I do because I do feel. We need to do things like that more often. I think people that are black and white who are committed to having a, to, to, to defeat racism are, need to be committed to, to fighting Look, it in all directions. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. Discrimination Look, gonna in go, all directions. I'm going to go, I'm gonna to go Mother Teresa on you. Okay. I'm going to go all Mother Teresa on you, okay? Okay. You cannot fight anything. You invite me to the party that is producing what you want to have. Do you understand? I don't fight racism. I don't even acknowledge the whole concept exists. It doesn't exist in my world because that's not how I look at people. You're not your genitalia. You're not your color. You're not your heritage. You are you, and I judge you on who you are. I wish we had at least 200,000 well, of the people who are living here in well, Portland. Well, then what I'm not saying just is... just like you. Okay, well, then we let's start... We need a lot more white people who think like you, understanding but unfortunately, that we we've got a population of white people... Okay, no, no, no. That just don't stop saying like white people. people. Okay, people who aren't, you know, charcoal-colored. <laughs> okay, look. Now, we're going to do my we're gonna do my race thing, okay? Uh, All right. You're charcoal. Do you know why you're charcoal? Because my mom and dad are? No, no, no. Well, no. Mo Charcoal. If you take a piece of charcoal and you scrape it here, it can be very light, it can be really dark, right? And it's carbon-based. It's the first thing on the planet. Charcoal. Okay, I'm wheat. Okay. Europe, wheat, white, wheat. <laughs> Got it? Europe, wheat. Yeah. All right? You reminded me when uh, I was in the Bamboo. Range. Bamboo. What's bamboo? Oriental people. Oh! It's a good kind of that color. It's from the east. It's very sturdy. You can't break it. You know, it's good quality stuff. Then we have clay people. Clay people are like the New Americas because that's kind of the color they are. They're a base of the earth and it comes from that. So they're clay people. Then we have bronze people. Bronze people are the Middle East people because that's where metal began that whole thing. So they're the bronze people. And then we have an additional one that nobody ever talked about. We have the water people. Water people are albinos. 
Hmm. And when it's all said and done, that whole thing about utilizing the concept that we use now to call things race is insane because the color that a person is has no more to do with their, quote, racial qualities than flying around the room. And the proof of that is the aboriginals in Australia. They are classed as Caucasian, yep. and some of them are as dark as this pen. Yep. So, to me, the color thing is absurd. I agree. I believe there's only one race, and that's the human race. But yeah. unfortunately, there is a population of people that I've got to deal with every day well, that do not agree with okay, me. Okay, well then I look and at them and I say, then I'm not dealing with you. They've got a right to live in the community that I live in, and I have to deal with them. Right, but I don't have to do business with them, and I think this is where well, people need to start Well, sometimes I have no choice. To... Yeah, that's okay, but what I'm saying... I mean, hold it. Think I'm about saying, this. when you do have think, the choice, to make the choice. Think about somebody like me. You don't have the choice because Let's of the government. Let's say there's a cop that pulls me over, and he does not like yeah, big I know, old black I know dudes about like those. me. I know about okay. those. Well, but I'm saying, make your choices about, where you can. Make well, your choices where you there's can. There's a lot of places, a huge number of places in our life. Yes, where and we there have are a no lot can't. of places where I don't have the opportunity to show my girlish figure. But, you know, that's tough. That's <laughs> tough for me. I don't care. What I do is I utilize the places I can. Okay? I don't worry about the places and, that I and, can't. And, and, and trust me, us black folks, we do that too. But Well, you know, stop saying us black folks. Because, okay, us charcoal people. Please, if everybody's the people. damn human race, let's start talking like we're the human well, race. Well, okay. Not them and us. Humans like me with a little bit darker skin. Why do we keep separating everybody out into different lips. colors? Well, God, right, they're, they're, look, that's how we live. No, that is how you live. I don't live that way. I don't separate people out in colors. I have a rainbow. I have a prism that separates things out into the colors I like. It is the prism colors, and I stick my foot in it in the morning. That's the only colors I'm concerned with. The rest of it is, pardon the expression, I'm going to say this, total bullshit to me. It's not that I disagree with you. I just understand in, in real life, when we walk out that door after this interview, that's not how the world is going to be treated. It is my life, and it's how I treat people, and it's how I when treat I'm people with to you. be treated. And I like okay. that you treat people that well, way. Well, this is how I, I run great. my life. Yep. Because if you that's start good. acting a certain way, and if you start screaming racism at, racism at me because you don't like what I'm saying, I'm going to be down your throat with both feet. Now, let me ask you this. Have I called you racist yet? No, no, I didn't say you. Okay. I'm saying you, you know, the big you. Yeah. Well, I feel bad that those people before, that okay. you met before me well, called you racist. I don't feel bad. I just feel like they're idiots, and I don't really pay too much attention to and idiots if ever, anyway. if they ever call you racist again, say, look, I want you to call up Fred and let him know um, that you feel I'm racist. And I can guarantee you, if they can't prove to me that you're racist, I will verbally abuse them. I love verbally abusing racist people and yeah, bullies. Yeah, well, I just, I don't I even bother it. with it. From now well, on... Well, no, it feels good. Yeah, but what you know, I do when, is I just laugh at really it. you really piss off a racist person, black or white... No, it, it doesn't feel good. It feels good. No, it doesn't, Fred. Well, it feels good for me. Well, let's put this it way. It feels good for me. It wouldn't feel good for you because right. you've got a softer heart than No, me. no, no. I but, know the repercussions of putting that kind of crappy energy out. Oh, that, oh, yeah. you know, it's good. Oh, it's, it's crappy good. energy. It's good. Oh, no, anger no, is not. not good. Anger in the right situation and is No, excellent. not anger. It's, it's not... When you act, mm -hmm. and you act with intention, mm -hmm. if there's anger behind it, you still get crap coming back. It's your intention in whatever you do. What year were you born? 47. So you're talking like my mom now. You don't know Dorothy Stewart. Unless your do you? mom birthed at 13, I don't think so. Yeah, do you know Dorothy Stewart? No. Right. Who's Dorothy Stewart? That's my mother. You're talking. Well, well, your mama says good things then. Your mama says the right yeah, things. Yeah, you shouldn't so. say that because she might be watching this show. His mama says the right thing. No, <laughs> and no, if she's no, watching, no. he says the right thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, mom, she does. And she it's true. Said. But the thing is that, and, and this is what I try and get across to people when they put out the, you know, the white racist and the white supremacist and all this other crap. Whatever you're putting out, my friend, is coming straight back to you tenfold. So you better be very more cautious white about what you're putting out. White supremacists are the worst crybabies. No. It's, it, it, Who are the worst crybabies? The crybabies who say it's times. not my fault. That's they the worst crybaby. They usually cry say baby. that too. But everybody says that. When they're that's not fault. saying things like, "No, don't do that. It's not right." All right, but I'm still not going to lump everybody in. Look, 
I think our problem is mm -hmm. we lump people in groups. There's no such thing as a forest. I agree. There's no such thing as a group. There are individuals who make well, a crowd. Well, they're the forest. No. You know why? It's a mental construct so that we can talk about groups of things, but there's no such thing as a forest. There's a bunch of individual trees. I'm going to have to disagree with you. No, no, no. Look it up. There's no such... These are constructs. Like community. There's no such thing as a community. There's no such thing as a group. There's only a bunch of individuals, and we think this is a construct. It's not a real thing. It's oh. only something we uh, use. I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with you on that. Well, you have to look it up and then prove it to me, not to respectfully disagree, because I, I can prove it. Okay, next okay? show we do. I'll it's prove a, it to it's, you. It's a construct that we use, okay. and that when you talk about giving groups rights, you can't give a group rights okay you can give individuals rights well to a degree you're right but what you can do is stop the encumbrancing of their rights and that's what a lot of people well, wait a minute face. no no that's no a... hold on you're stopping the encumbrance of the rights of an individual not a group okay uh th that too but i'm talking about a whole population of individuals well when you're talking about groups and part of the problem of talking about groups is people start deciding things about groups and I hate that when people do that. Me too. In other words, they say things like unless they're bad people. Uh, Republicans do this or black people do this or uh, people who are 55 do this. I'm sorry. No. I know a bunch of individuals and I only talk about what I know. I don't talk about groups. I don't know. Hmm. And that's what I'm trying to get I'm trying to ask other people to continue a discussion with me on that page you know i think what you want is a beautiful thing i don't think we're there yet i mean we've got too many bad people in front of us that we got to defeat first well you don't have to defeat bad people yes you do you just have to encourage more good people to stand up you can't well, defeat evil when you defeat a bad person especially when you hurt them or their family really bad it allows them to be out of the way so good people can take No, place. it allows you to have expended energy in a negative fashion that's probably going to come back to you. No, that's it's, all it's, it's done. Not negative. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Sure. It's only negative when if you, you fail. Well, now, if you don't hurt a bad, bad person, like you extended some okay. energy and here's you don't deal. put a hurt down on them, then here's that's the bad. Deal. That's here's bad. Here's the deal. You're passing judgment on that person. They're somebody. passing judgment. Bad people pass judgment, too. Okay, they do I'm bad saying things. If I pass judgment on that person, mm -hmm. then I can expect judgment to be passed on me in future. Do you understand? That's this true. is the way it goes. That's true. Tat. Well, let's put it this way. I've had bad judgments, illegitimate judgments passed on me any number of times. And I wonder why that is. Let me explain something to you. It is incredibly, incredibly easy to not do racist things. Well, I'm not to talking not, about racism. I'm racist. talking about I'm talking about passing judgment. Well, let's not talk about race. Let's talk about passing judgment. I don't give a damn what well, it's about. We're going to disagree because I will always pass judgment on somebody I think is racist. I will pass judgment on people that support people that support racism. Well, the thing is that I you mean, racist always people, have the tendency ra racist you, people, racist people are one of the biggest threat to a continuity of a free and safe society. Okay, well, what oh, about yeah. using compassion instead of anger and hate? Um, I do have compassion. No, I'm saying, what about using compassion instead of you anger know, and hate? sometimes that does work, but you cannot love a lot. I say half the hate out there you can't love away. There are people well, who are just so Well, then that goes against, hateful. whoa, let's go They're back the, to, okay. You can't if, do if it. That's it true, ain't going to work. If that's true, you've just negated the total Christian religion, which is fine with me because I'm an atheist. <laughs> okay. I don't care. Be no, you just I disagree with you. The entire I, I disagree religion. with you because in the Christian religion there is heaven and hell, and God still loves you even though He sends you to hell. Well, even though you're an atheist and you don't believe in God. Well, it's not a question of belief, because the word belief means accepting as truth that which for which you don't believe. So I can't not believe in a God because it doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. There's no evidence for it. So an atheist is somebody who um, is not basically does not accept the outside authority of a being who directs them from saying you you know judging whether you're doing right judging whether you're doing wrong or passing any kind of a moral judgment on me the only judgment call i have is with me and the universe well i got to tell you if there is no heaven and hell i'm going to be very disappointed because there's a lot of people i would have put my hands on 
had I known there is no afterlife where you're going to burn in hell No, no, no. I should. didn't say that there's no afterlife because the the thing that I accepted I mean, is truth. I mean, Mom, the, you told me to leave it up to the Lord and let the Lord handle them, and now she's telling me there is no Lord. No, no, no. I'm saying that it's it's a concept, all right? What I believe, I'm a Vipassana meditator, and mm-hmm. what, I, what I accept as my understanding of the universe is I have a direct connection with the universal, that there's no separation between me and the universal. So that that it's mm-hmm. it's kind of all together. We don't. I don't. I don't need an intermediary, and I don't need a a priest or anybody who's going to interpret anything for me. So well, you're you're way more sophisticated in that area than I am. I'm just a simple, simple person in that area, and I do believe in God, and I do believe there's a heaven and hell, and I'm not a fire and brimstone guy or a holy roller or nothing like that, but. I do believe that we have a a moral uh, obligation to treat each other as well as we should. And people who do not treat others well, um, the good people need to be protected from them. And I do feel people who are racist are, as human beings, flawed characters. What about the more important thing other than being racist? How about people who lie, cheat, and steal? How about if we get rid of those? uh, Don't you see where everything stems from the bottom here? Well, you see, the thing is, when it comes to racists, they lie, cheat, and steal more toward people like black people and other people that they feel... Well, I, you know, again... I mean, Fred, I mean, you're the, making all these pronouncements and judgment well, calls. Racist Excuse me. People Wait a minute. Feel comfortable Excuse with me. lie, cheating, you're making and stealing judgment against other people. Calls. You're making fast, From big judgment calls. From 52 years of experience. Your experience only. You're well, not. Well, I've talked to some people all right, who look, are older and younger you're than making, me who have had making, similar experiences. Okay, but the thing is that you are passing judgment on a whole group of people, and you know what? The only experience I've ever gotten out of passing judgment on a whole group of people is being wrong. Usually, very quickly, shoved in my face and told uh, me about I'm, it. I'm usually not wrong. Well, what I'm saying is, instead of focusing on racism being the bad thing, what are the qualities that create a racist? Oh, my God. Are you going to give me time to explain it? Well, no. I said, what are the qualities? You don't but, have to explain anything. No, but I mean, the list. Are they, are they angry people? Are they happy people? Are they sad people? Oh, what the, are the, the qualities? Very, the, the varying degrees. But the ones that I, that I really don't like, like the ones in journalism here in Oregon, they're just evil, bad people. I mean, the more I learn well, about their lives... Well, that doesn't say anything. What's evil and what's bad? They're, they're just innately bad people. They even got into journalism for bad reasons. You know what I'm talking about? They're just bad people. And uh, is, is this what I, like I found out when I used to investigate cops? You know, back when I was on Payak back in the 90s, we would find that when you came across a bad cop, they were bad off work. They were bad at work. Okay, well, what Their makes pets them didn't bad? like them. What makes them bad? You just got people out there that either because of... What they do of, this bad? Well, they just are bad toward other human beings. That's what I'm seeing in this context. Well, do they lie? They cheat? They lie, they cheat, they're underhanded, they... They do things uh, that are completely immoral. When it comes to people who are not like them, they feel completely comfortable with doing whatever they feel like they need to do, uh, whether it's for pure enjoyment or for advancement, doesn't matter. They absolutely have no regard for the person that they feel is beneath them. Um, you know, have you ever had been around a white person that says, "Look." I can't help I've it. I've been around I a lot just, of people who I just have been don't assholes, like black people. Okay, no, and I, I just don't look, like them. I've been around, I've been around charcoal people who said I can't help it. I just can't stand white people. I know, and they are people okay. that are character flawed. So for They're what I'm saying people. is, why don't we they just drop this whole beings. thing and get it out of the way? Because we are still yeah. allowing a lot of things to be taught to our young people, right? That reinforces racist stereotypes well, this, and racist concepts okay. from hundreds of years All ago. Right, well, so what we've got to do is we got to talk about them and identify them, and we got to well, we got to break about, that wheel right now. How about we break the wheel of the fact that they can't read and critically think and do math? Why don't we break that wheel? Maybe Ooh. they wouldn't have any. The kids in school, are you kidding? Well, they can't make they can the in school, out of just not Portland public schools. I mean, we got the man. Our school is bad. Okay. And well, what I'm day, saying is, one day, okay. some, some parent is just going to go postal and walk into the front door down there at PPS and get rid of as many of those people down there as they can. And well, I can't say... Well, I certainly say, don't want to even envision Well, I don't, I don't want that okay. to happen, but well, they're, too stupid, they're too stupid to av- avoid it. They do not g- want to give a good product out that the people of Portland can brag about. 
Well, do you understand that it's not broken, that this is exactly what they want? Because ignorant people who are emotionally driven and can't critically think are a great slave class? I can't disagree with you. Okay. Well, then, if it's not, if it's not an accident, which I really don't believe it is because you can't fail that spectac spectacularly. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You can't try hard enough to fail that well. It's got to be planned to be that bad. Okay? I can't disagree with you on that. So, if it's planned to be that bad, then the one sole measure that most parents could do is get their kids out of the system. That's not as easy as said than done. But well, it's a nice idea, and parents that can do it, a lot of them are doing it. That's why the population of kids who are going to Portland Public Schools is roughly the same population we had when I graduated in 1983, and the city of Portland has more than doubled the size since then. Yeah. So a lot of parents are doing what you're and, talking and about. And a lot of the Portland Public School teachers have their kids in, in other kinds of in schools. In charter schools and in, private schools. Yeah, they're not A high going, percentage of them, yeah. you're right. And they know because that's part of the problem. So for me, if you want educated kids, then you're going to have to hold the educational system accountable. I agree. And the more money, the more bonds, everything's going toward PERS, and they're laying off more teachers. So yeah, I don't blame the situation's teachers. a little bit I broken. do not blame teachers yeah. as much as I blame administrators and principals and the school board members. Uh, the teachers are soldiers, and they're going out and doing, doing their job. The, yes, and I know several of them who recently quit because they can't do their job. Yeah, but so. administrators... School board people, right. if you've worked for the Portland Public Schools in the last 40 years, you should feel ashamed of yourself. You either feel ashamed of yourself or you're proud at how much you've ripped the people of Portland off. Right. And that, to me, it's, Character it's flawed very, people. It's, it's something that needs to be addressed as far as uh, more well, people going to school. How are you going to address How do you feel we should oh, address it? Oh, we've got just a few seconds yeah. here. We're about ready to roll down very mm -hmm. quickly. Fred, thank you so much for being here. I know we sort of trampled on a whole bunch of things mm -hmm. and uh, we have 20 more seconds here anything you'd like to leave people with no Brooklyn? just thank you again for uh, having me on the show today uh, thank you have for a being good here. time and uh enjoy having you here mm -hmm. and i enjoy you being that outspoken about a lot of things thank so, you thank you mm -hmm. and hopefully we can have lots more okay <laughs> sure we will and hopefully they've got the credits going yay i hope <laughs> this is fun this is and um yeah, in the future, yeah, I'd like to do, I'd like to try 